Well, a very blessed Lent to you, my dear friends. Thanks for joining us today as we gather. Yesterday, if you were here, we uh, finished up the book of Job, and I wanted to continue through to the end of Job. Uh, what happened is because we followed through to the end of Job, we didn't pick up right at the beginning with Ash Wednesday and everything that happened. So today we're making a correction. We finished out the book of Job. Today we jump back into the book of Genesis. Today now, because of the order of things, we start marking the days as the days in Lent. So last Sunday was the first Sunday in Lent. Today is the first Thursday in the first Sunday of Lent, which is March 10th. Now as we gather today, we jump into the book of Genesis. And we see God's great promise as he plucked an unbeliever... Abram, and he plucked him out of his unbelief and gave him belief and gave him the promise that he would be with him always and that from Abram, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. We'll follow Abram now through the book of Genesis. As we begin today, our psalm is Psalm 107. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Well, hear the word of the Lord today from the psalm, a, a psalm uh, that we're very familiar with as far as what happens. Some went down to the sea in ships doing business on the great waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven. They went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their evil plight. They reeled and staggered like drunken men. They were at their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad that the waters were quiet, and he brought them to their desired heaven. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of men, let them extol him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. The evil men, the ones who were doing evil against the Lord, saw the great deeds that God was doing through the waves, the height. They, the waves would go up as high as the heavens and down to the depths. And they realized that they would not be able to withstand this. And they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. This is man's plight against evil where we, we can't win and we cry out to the Lord and he rescues us. This has uh, images of, of uh, Jonah on the boat where he said, these waves are my fault, throw me over. This has images of the disciples in the boat with Jesus, the fishermen disciples worried that they're going to drown and Jesus stands up and calms the wind and the waves, and they're stilled, and they believe in him. This is the same thing that goes on in our world when we see our enemies, and we put our trust in our Lord. We cry out just like they did here, and the Lord saves us. Well, the, the Old Testament reading, we're in Genesis chapter 11, verses 27, and going through chapter 12, verse 20. Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah fathered Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran fathered Lot. Haran died in the presence of his father Terah in the land of his kindred in Ur of the Chaldeans. And Abraham and Nahor took wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah, the daughter of Haran. The father of Milcah was Ish Ishkah. Now Sarah was barren. And had no children. Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his grandson, and Sarai, his daughter in law, and his son Abram, uh, excuse me, 
Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and they went forth together from Ur of the Chaldeans to go into the land of Canaan, but when they came to Haran, they settled there. The days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Now the Lord God said to Abram, go from your country and from your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and bless your name, so that you might be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in all of the families of the earth they shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all of their possessions that they had gathered, and the people that they had acquired in Haran, and they set out to the land of Canaan. And they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, to the oak of Morah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he moved to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent. And Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And he built there an altar to the Lord and called called on the name of the Lord. And Abraham journeyed on, still going toward the Negev. Now there was a famine in the land, so Abram went down to Egypt to sojourn there. For the famine was severe in the land. When he was about to enter Egypt, he said to Sarai, his wife, I know that you are a woman beautiful in appearance, and when the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but they will let you live. Say that you are my sister, that it might go well with me because of you, and that my wife may be spared for your sake. When Abram entered Egypt, the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful, and the prince of Pharaoh saw her. They they praised her to Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house, and for her sake he he dealt well with Abraham, and he had sheep and oxen, male donkeys, male servants, female servants, female donkeys and camels. But the Lord afflicted Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So so Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister? So that I took her for my wife. Now then, here is your wife, take her and go. And Pharaoh gave men orders concerning him, and they sent him away with his wife and all that he had. This is the word of the Lord. Well, here we have the beginning. We have God just plucking Abram out of his family and saying to Abram, you're the one. Abram, you're the one I'm going to build my mighty nation through. You're the one I'm going to build the nation of Israel through. Abram, you're the one I'm going to bring the Savior, the Messiah, into the world through your family and your family line And all the world will be blessed, and all the nations of the world will be blessed because of you. Here we see Abram, and his feet are made of clay. Abram's a sinner just like us. Abram was called, and and God said, leave your land, leave everything you have, and go. And he did at 75. This was not a small undertaking. Abram was rich. Abram had a lot of of cattle, a lot of land, a lot of uh, animals, a lot of servants, a lot of things, and and he went. God said go, and he did. And he didn't have a plan. Did you notice that God didn't say travel for twenty two days and then you'll be there? God just said go to the land I will show you. He had no more direction than that. In our world today, it's funny, people get all excited and and nervous when there's no internet because they depend on the Google for everything. And without that, they feel lost. And here Abram, on the word of God, on his call, left and obeyed and went, trusting that God would continue to be with him as he went, and he was. 
the writer, Moses here, is giving us some clues as we go along. He's already introduced us to Lot. That was, it would be Abram's nephew. And Lot would be brought into the story. And soon Lot would be uh, more at the center of the story as we go along. And he also is brought up to us to remind us here so early on that Abram and Sarai were not able to have kids. Now at the end of the story, we, we have this this interesting place now where Abram is in Egypt and he's worried that uh, his wife is too beautiful and they're going to kill him because of her. So Abram devises the plan. Tell them, you're my sister. They'll treat you well, they'll treat me well, it'll all be fine. When I said Abram had feet of clay, we certainly see it here. Because Abraham, Abram, at this point, was not trusting in God. Abram was not fulfilling his vocation as husband. Abram was looking to save his own hide by his wife. Maybe if they think that you're just my sister, then they'll treat me well and they won't kill me. And we're really what Abram was doing. He was offering up his sister, excuse me, his wife Sarai's chastity in place of his safety. Abraham did, said this to Sarai, and Sarai said, he is my brother. And then Pharaoh took Sarai to be his wife, his concubine, whatever that might be. Here at the end, God is redirecting. God is fixing the situation that Abram messed up. He inflicted these plagues again on Pharaoh, nothing like he would later on, but enough so that Pharaoh realized there's something the matter. And he said to Abram, take her, and you go and get out of my land. And there again, God showing us that he uses ordinary people, sinful people, people with clay feet, Abram and Sarai, to bring his means, his gifts into the world. This will be a wonderful story that will unfold for us as we go along of God continuing to watch over and guide Abram and all nations would be blessed. Not blessed in a physical sense, but blessed because salvation has come into the world for all people, starting here with Abram, so the promise might continue through Christ and Christ on the cross given for you and me and all people and for our forgiveness. This is the word of the Lord from Genesis today. As we uh, go back to the catechism, where will we find something in the catechism that will deal today with with this article, with this, uh, what's going on in the story? We can easily go to the Ten Commandments, to the Sixth Commandment, you shall not commit adultery. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not lead a se- so excuse me we should fear and love god so that we lead a sexually pure and decent life in what we say and do in husband and life love and honor each other sarai did not set out to commit adultery she was caught up in this situation the sin was abram's abram didn't do what a husband should do he did not protect his wife and her honor and their marriage he was more concerned about his own safety We pray. Father of grace and mercy, we thank you for this day, and we thank you that you have called Abram from his darkness into the marvelous light, that you used him, Father, even despite his clay feet and his sin, to bring the hope and promise of Jesus into our world. Today, dear Father, lead and guide us. Direct us, Father, to hear like Abram heard, to uh, honor you and to listen where you would lead us. We pray, Father, that you would continue to keep our eyes focused on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Bless us now and hear us as we pray the prayer your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, have an enjoyable day and a blessed Lent.